everyone. This is Jennifer Allerding joining you this evening from Galleon High School in the gymnasium with a back-to-back -back night with live um, sessions. So I uh, had the opportunity to talk with you a little bit ago about athletics. And so now we're going to be talking a little bit about the Galleon Online Academy. And so thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm smiling. You might not be able to see it, but we're happy that you're here. And so just want to welcome you to tonight's session. I have joining us tonight uh, Angie Gimbel and Ronnie Reinhardt. So they're going to be helping us out, answering a lot of questions that have come our way. Um, just wanted to also uh, let you know that we know that a lot of you have had questions. Um, we've been taking those questions. We're here to answer them today. And also wanted to let you know that we have extended our deadline for the Galleon Online Academy to tomorrow uh, at noon. So I um, thought we'd give our families some additional time to hear what we had to say tonight. Um, ask some questions and then have some time to think about things. And so that deadline has been extended to tomorrow at noon. So I'm going to go ahead and get things going. We're going to turn things over to Ronnie Reinhardt, our Director of Technology, who's just going to share a few announcements with you to start off with. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. So the first thing I'd like to do is remind all of our middle school students about our curbside kickoff that's going to be held this Thursday. It, that starts at noon and goes till 7 p.m. Um, we sent a call out this afternoon letting everybody know the details on that. But just to um, emphasize one point that we are not going to be deploying iPads during that event as we had advertised. So we've had some delays in shipping from, of some new devices. And so we're just gonna hold off until school starts to get the middle school devices in the hands of those kiddos. Um, we will, however, deploy our high school devices, the iPads. Um, our sophomores, juniors, and seniors can come to the high school on August 12th, and th they can pick those up in the media center, and that will be an event, sorry, my mask is slipping, that um, goes from noon until 7. And then the next day on August 13th, our freshmen are welcome to come to the high school from 5 to 7. Um, in order for those high school students to receive their iPads, they do need to bring the bag that we've provided them. New to the district students will receive a bag. And then your parents must have signed final forms and have um, students need to sign those final forms as well. And if you need help doing that, we can help you when you pick up your device. But parents need to get those final forms completed first. Um, finally then, in deploying, our online academy devices. We will do that um, the following week, August 17th and 18th. And we will do that from the intermediate building. And we have the iPads over there in the gymnasium. And what we'd like to do with those kiddos is split the alphabet over those two days. So, excuse me, this is really bugging me. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Um, so anyway, uh, the first part of the alphabet on Monday the 17th, so A through K, you're invited to come pick up those iPads, and the same, um, the, sorry, L through the rest of the alphabet on Tuesday, and those times are from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And again, if you are a returning student and you already have an iPad bag, you need to bring that with you. And then there are new kiddos and the younger kiddos will give you a bag to get you started. So if you have any questions about those deployment times, you can uh, call my office and I'll answer those questions. Thank you, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate those, those announcements. Again, if you have questions, please go ahead and put those in the live feed so we can continue to answer those. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch gears here, and I'm going to introduce uh, Miss Angie Gimbel, and she has been working with. Is that correct, Angie? Yes. All right. So we're going to go back and forth here a little bit. I'm going to ask Angie some questions so that way she can share out a little bit about Galleon Online Academy, remote learning, virtual learning. What does all of this mean, and, and what's going on with it? So, um, Angie, can you start off just by sharing with our families? What is the difference between, you know, the, the online learning versus remote learning? Um, when you are learning online um, through the online academy, that means that you're going to be following a specified curriculum that is already set up. 
Um, you can work on it anytime you want. You can work ahead of pace. You can work behind the pace. Basically, the computer is your teacher. Um, for remote learning, um, a real live teacher, a Galleon City Schools employee, will be your teacher. Um, there will be some live um, meetings where you can talk to each other through Zoom. Um, there will be some, um, some flexibility in the curriculum. Uh, there will be the opportunity for some intervention. Um, there will be the opportunity to do some dibbles testing and make sure that you're learning what you need to be learning and you get the opportunity to, uh, to um, experience closer to what the um, regular students would in the brick and mortar building. Um, for the remote learning, they will be using Seesaw and Canvas. But for the online academy, we go through Nova or PLP schools and we work, we don't use that academy or we don't use that at all. Um, we don't use Canvas or we don't use Seesaw at all. We just work through the online academy through Nova. Um, the remote program will be continuing to use the Wonders curriculum and it'll be um, you can work on some, sometimes um, work on your own, um, at your own time of day, but you're gonna have daily assignments that follow a specified schedule with the rest of your class. The online academy is pretty much individualized. And what I can tell you all um, at this point is we have had a huge response with our Galleon Online Academy, so we're certainly excited about that. We are continually, even before we got on here with you, we're monitoring our numbers as those are continuing to increase. And so we're happy we could provide an option for our families and our kiddos. Um, that's an untraditional type of setting. And so, um, you know, I appreciate Angie explaining that. So when we're looking at, you know, remote learning, because we see in the, the opening, reopening plan that there's a potential that our students could be working remotely, you know, at level two, three, four, um, you know, depending on the number of days at which level. But again, that would be our kiddos working with Galleon teachers, um, you know, flipping almost what's happening in the classroom and teachers providing that content digitally. Now, I will tell you at the end of last year, I think our staff did a phenomenal job of 24 hours notice um, flipping things. We have had lots of, of feedback from our students, from our families, parents, um, and we have worked extremely hard to address those concerns so that way um, things are more manageable for our families. Everything is a little bit more clear for our students. And so our teachers worked really hard um, earlier this week and last week on developing what that looks like. So, you know, when we talk about remote learning at the end of last year, we are gonna see a whole new um, improved remote learning if we're at a level two, three, or four um, this year. Now, when we're looking at the Galleon Online Academy, we have our, our kiddos that Angie had mentioned uh, really at our intermediate level up, those kids will be on um, the curriculum through NOVA. We will have teachers that are monitoring them. And then our kiddos that are at the primary level, again, that will duplicate almost what that level four looks like. So there'll be a teacher that'll be assigned to them, uh, more personalized with those kindergarten, first, second graders. We're monitoring the intermediate right now just because our numbers are increasing. So after tomorrow at noon, so sign up by noon if you're going to jump on. Uh, we'll be looking at that and making some final decisions as to you know what that in, ends up looking like with those kiddos. Um, Angie, I'm going to go back to you here for a moment. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the online format? Anything else that you want to tell us with uh, high school, intermediate, primary? science and Myra will be, will be helping with the social studies in ELA. Um, each of the grades, kindergarten, first, second, third, um, possibly fourth, maybe fifth, we don't know yet, um, will have an individual teacher for each of those four grades. Mm -hmm. yep. And I am super excited about um, Mrs. Valentine and Mrs. Zeisler working together. Um, you know, they both have areas in which they have areas of expertise and so they're going to be teaming up together 
to, to tackle those kiddos and work with them. So if our students have questions related to math and science, Mrs. Valentine's gonna be fielding those questions. And then Mrs. Zeisler is gonna be helping out with English language arts and social studies. So that's not necessarily how we had planned it, but that was a great <laughs> idea from those teachers. And so we thought that absolutely, we're gonna do that to, to provide as much support as we can for our students. So we appreciate our teachers input there. Um, we have a few questions that have come our way, and so we're just gonna go ahead and jump into those and, and read some of those. Mrs. Gimble, can you tell us a little bit about students in sixth through 12th grade, we've had questions about band, choir, robotics, you know, some of those electives. What does that look like? And if families choose to bring those students on campus, is that permissible or how are we handling that situation? Right now, um, we're considering that as permissible. Um, each student will get five to seven classes and th that will count as one of their classes, band or choir or industrial technology or robotics. Um, those will be in school with a, a live person. Those won't necessarily be remote unless the school has to go to remote. Mm -hmm. And so just to clarify, those are the four classes that we are, you know, we're not opening it up to all electives. So just band, choir, robotics, and industrial tech at this point would be classes. Um, that would be something that we would be scheduling individually with families if, if that is a, um, is a request or an activity, an elective that our students currently participate in. So basically, um, students who are doing the online academy or the remote learning won't need to come onto campus unless it's for special services um, that they've scheduled that they need to see the student face-to-face -face or possibly for testing. So you had mentioned a little bit about specialized services, and um, I know that you know my little guy, he receives some OT and PT, and we have other kiddos out there that receive those remote, or those, those related services, as well as students that have an IEP. And so um, that's one thing that we have had lots of discussions about. Um, what does that look like if you have a student that has you know, individual needs that need to be met within well, the curriculum. Obviously it will, since it's an IEP, individualized education plan, I mean, it will be need to be individualized for each student. Um, so we'll need to look at that and see exactly what it would look like. Um, for each of those students who have an IEP, they will have a special intervention specialist that will work together with the remote teacher or with the online teacher to make sure that their needs are being met as well. And as far as the related services, you know, speech, OT, PT, we're currently working through that plan. Um, I know that Mrs. Parrott, our um, special ed director, has been working um, with me, with other individuals on what that could potentially look like. Uh, she is scheduling a meeting currently with our intervention specialists throughout the district and our related services, so that way we can have some conversations there. But the thought is at this point that obviously we have to provide those services. Um, if families would like those services to be provided in person, then we would certainly accommodate that, or we are gonna be looking at a virtual option of providing those services as well. So um, again, I, you know, I appreciate Angie bringing up you know, the individualization of everything because that's truly what it is based on the needs of each student. And so um, as much as we wanna answer specific questions, that's difficult to do because each child is different and we need to take uh, you know, that information into consideration. So literally those will be individual phone calls that will be taking place um, with our staff, with you as a family, so that way we can work together to determine what's appropriate for your child and what's best for your child and your family. There's also been a lot of um, questions about WEPs or students who are on gifted programs or accelerated programs. If the student was planning on taking eighth grade math, well, a seventh grader, for instance, that is possible. If they were planning on taking high school courses while still in eighth grade, that is possible too for like algebra one and biology. So that's something that we're thinking about. Um, we're thinking about those students as well, not just the the IEPs, but we're also looking at the WEPs and the gifted students. Absolutely. Can you tell me, Angie, um, when we're looking at scheduling courses, you know, we've had some questions about how many courses and classes kids would be taking and, you know, what does that look like if you're a, pri you know, a, a primary versus a high school student? Um, so if you are a primary student, and that would be grades kindergarten through fifth grade, they require 910 minutes of instruction per year. 
Um, so that divides out, if you divide that by 180 days, that's about uh, five, uh, about five hours a day of instruction. So if each class is supposed to take about an hour, that's about five classes. So you'd have your four core classes. You would have English language arts, social studies, um, science, and uh, math. And then also a little bit of extra time in there to work in some integrated arts, you know, music, art, PE, um, getting them active, you know, things like that. At the middle school level, um, it starts to change into 100 or 1,000 minutes. Uh, so we have a little extra time in there. Um, that would be basically five and a half hours a day or um, six classes. And the, the class periods are usually about 40 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes the student. You know, some students really fly through the work. Some students take a little more in an hour. And as I said before, some subjects are easier and some subjects are harder. So there's a little bit of flexibility with that. But we're, and we also need to consider graduation requirements. So especially when you get to the high school level, it might not only it might be five classes or it might be up to six or seven, especially if you have credit recovery or we're trying to get you on pace to make sure you have um, in AACP or I'm sorry, uh, for to play college athletics or you need to make sure that you're prepared to go on to college or to do our GECA program in the 10th and um, 11th and 12th grade. So it's pretty much, in, once again, it's individualized, um, but we need to make sure that we have enough classes, at least five, but sometimes up to six, seven, maybe eight if they've got credit recovery as well. So what does it look like if a family um, needs help? They need support um, through technology, through the curriculum. How do they communicate that need? There's lots of ways. Um, probably the easiest way is through the system itself. It's kind of like text messaging, but through the PLP or through the NOVA program. Um, we can also email. We can set up some conferences um, to do virtual conferences. We can talk on the phone. Or if we need to, we can set up a personal face-to-face -face conference. I'd like to address that as well. Um, we also are implementing a new program. Some of you may have already been using the Remind app. Um, we have had in the past about half of our um, teaching staff and coaches have used the free version of Remind and just recently we have purchased that as a district. So we will be rolling out information about the Remind app which is a text message system and so for our, um, some of our students will be more familiar and parents more familiar with that. That will be yet another way that we can communicate um, with our teachers and coaches. And so then in addition um, to that, we also have the Canvas capabilities um, if we should go remote altogether outside of the online curriculum. There will be a lot of different ways to communicate. We also have a parent help desk link on our Galleon website um, that will go directly to the technology department if you should have um, any problems with the device itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing too, um, you know, we're talking about all of these different ways that you can communicate with us. We've really tried to streamline that a little bit more this year. I know, um, you know, as a parent, Kane was a kindergartner or a, a preschooler last year, but you know, we had. Um, you know, different teachers and different staff members that were using Dojo. You know, they were using Blooms, they were using Seesaw. And so as a parent, I had two or three apps that I was trying to navigate for him. You know, and um, you know, my frustration, I'm sure, was a lot of your frustration as well. And um, so we've tried to streamline that. Our teachers, uh, we, we've met with them. Seesaw was what they wanted to utilize. So that's what we are gonna be using for our primary. And so, Gone are the days of having multiple apps for different lessons that are coming your way. Uh, but we will have, again, Remind district-wide in which we can communicate through that, that venue as well. So um, you, you may see some things coming both ways, but academically, as far as instruction, that will come through Seesaw. Uh, a couple of other questions as far as, you know, can students that are Galleon Online uh, participate in extracurricular activities? 
Yes, of course. Um, they can do sports, um, they can do drama, they can do like band or choir, like we talked about earlier. Um, just about any activity that the school provides, extracurricular wise or co curricular, um, the online student can do as well. As far as field trips, if something would happen for field trips in the spring, like the DC trip, or possibly um, going to Cedar Point, I mean, we need to s stop and think about, you know, if that's actually going to happen and, pl and plan for it. Um, but then we need to make sure that we are ready to, to jump on board if we need to do that. So we need to talk to the teachers. We need to make sure that we talk to, talk to the parents and everyone is aware of what's going on. Communication needs to be there. And I know one of the questions was associated with fees. You know, there are no additional fees that are associated with the Galleon Online Academy. You know, just that technology premium that, that we do charge. Um, as far as supplies, what does that look like? Because I know that there's a supply list that's out there for each building. And so, um, Mrs. Gimbel, do you have any insight on that? Or is that something we need to work through? Or what um, are your thoughts? Most of everything that you can, you can do on your iPad. Um, there's virtual labs um, rather than actual, you know, using real beakers. Um, sometimes there is um, an option to do a project instead of writing a paper or instead of, um, you know, giving a speech. You know, they give options. So if you want to make a poster, you know, maybe you should go out and buy those 25 cent crayons, you know. Just basic school supplies and basic office, office supplies that you should have around your house. At the beginning of each unit, there is a, sub, a potential supply list, especially for science, um, you know, things like balloons, possibly. Uh, it would depend on what grade level and what subject area. Thank you. We're going to switch gears here a little bit. And can you tell us a little bit about attendance and how attendance is going to be calculated for the year for the Galleon Online kiddos? Okay. Uh, for a regular remote student, um, when you're when you're taking attendance and for the Galleon Online Academy, you're going to have assignments that are due each each week or each day for the remote students. So um, for the Online Academy, you're going to have a certain percentage of work that you need to get done in a week. So let's say that you're, just to make numbers easy, um, let's just say that you have 10% completion due by the end of the week. If you get all 10% done, you'll get five out of five days of, of the week, assuming it's a five day week, of course. Now, if you go over that, um, that's great. You'll still only get five out of five days of the week. However, that can kind of carry over to the next week. So say the next week you're at 15% and by the end of the week you need 20% and you haven't done, you know, you've only done like 5% all week. So then you'd be missing some of your days of attendance that week. Um, like I said, you can always work ahead. Um, you can set your own schedule. You can um, work on one subject per day, or you can do all subjects in one day. When you go to the PLP system, it'll give you a list of assignments for the entire semester. And it'll give you due, tentative due dates for each of those. And when you complete it, you'll see on the, on the list how it's completed. And then you can like make your own schedule if you would like to do that that way. And so that might look a little bit different at our primary level, you know, where we have some of our, you know, little tigers, you know, we want to try to duplicate what that looks like mm -hmm. in the classroom as much as possible. You know, so, uh, you know, we're going to be working through our teachers, what that looks like, um, trying to provide some maybe recorded lessons because we know that our parents, like me, I'm working all day, just like all of you, you know, and to come home and, and have to sit down with my kiddo who's a kindergartner, um, you know, that would be a most convenient time for us. So um, I think you're going to see a lot of flexibility, but we are going to try to adhere to a, a little bit more of a structured schedule within the, um, you know, the K to to three, four, five level, um, just because of what we're trying to accomplish and keeping those kids on pace with their peers that are sitting in the, in the classroom. So um, some other questions that we have here, um, can you tell me a little bit, oh, I can tell you a little bit about this. So someone was asking about meals. So I am really excited that with Galleon Online Academy that we are able to provide meals for families. Um, one thing that we did commit to our, our kids and our families at the end of last year when everything was shutting down and people were boarding themselves up, 
was that we were going to be on campus and we were going to be feeding our kids. And we think that that is extremely important. That's a service that I know that our transportation department, our bus drivers, our food service, um, ladies that you know they're passionate about and we want to continue to provide meals for kids. We are excited that this next year we're going to be offering free breakfast to all of our students on campus. So uh, we will not be charging for breakfast. We're excited about that. So any of our Galleon online kids are eligible to receive free breakfast each day. Um, also, uh, students can purchase lunches or if they are free and reduced can receive those rates or those free meals for lunch as well. So we will be working on um, scheduling pickup times and, and communicating what that looks like in the near future, but that is something that we are committed to doing and something that we are working hard to make happen as an additional, uh, I guess, perk of Galleon Online Academy. Uh, some other questions came in here that I guess I can also take related to state testing. Uh, grumblings are starting to uh, creep up out there about testing and will we be testing this year, will we be not? So I would say definitely stay tuned for that. Um, like I said, lots of conversations. So uh, internally, we will continue to monitor our students. Um, so that way we're providing instruction that's at their level and providing interventions that are needed. So, you know, we will continue to assess, but as far as the state assessments, we have not received any clear guidance at this time about that. So we will keep you updated as to what that looks like in the, in the near future. Um, or maybe not the near future, depending on what the state um, throws our way. So uh, we will continue to communicate those things. Mr. Stone, do we have any questions that are coming in on our live feed at this time that we can answer or help to address? Yes, we do, um, Mrs. Allarding. I think one thing I, I would like Mrs. Reinhardt to do is go back and reiterate the pickup times for okay. the devices. That, that's sure. a common theme that's right. coming through. Right, from absolutely. Folks. So if you could do that, that would be great. Sure, so um, we are going to deploy our, I'll start with the online academy. So the online academy is going to be for the last names starting with A through K will be August 17th, that's a Monday, from four o'clock to eight o'clock and that will be at the Galleon Intermediate Gym. The next day, we'll finish out the rest of the alphabet. So Tuesday the 18th from four to eight. And um, I think Angie then will talk about the um, orientation that will follow on the 19th that will be virtual. So we'll make sure she adds that information in too. Um, so then moving backwards then, high school, Freshman, Thursday, August 13th from 5 to 7. Wednesday, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and that's pretty much all day, starting at noon all the way till 7 o'clock p.m. And the reason we're stretching that out so much is because we want to try to keep the numbers of people in the gyms um, or in the buildings kind of limited. So that's why they're, we're stretching that out so much. And then the middle school students they will um, get their devices that first week of school, hopefully. So um, we're still waiting on some iPads to be delivered, and so we need to have some time to get those set up and, and dispersed to the students. It's vitally important that students have the iPad bag that we've provided to them up to this point. New students, we will issue a new bag, and, uh, but the students that already have them need to bring them back to school that's how we know that they're transported back and forth safely. And then the K-5s in school, those iPads are already gonna be waiting for them in their classrooms. And then um, should we go remote for all of those other grade levels, at that point, they will start to go home as well and we'll take care of bags at that point. Yeah, and to make it a little bit easier, we will push that information out separately for you. Mm -hmm. So if you are feverishly writing right now, right. you can stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. We will go ahead right. and make sure that we develop a flyer with all of that information yes. to it, make it convenient in one spot for all of you. And um, we will send all calls. We'll send out emails. It'll be posted on the website. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Another question we had uh, specifically about the online academy, when, when do we expect to be able to start contacting the families 
about the registration and, and the online academy? Actually, we're going to start looking at that as soon as tomorrow. Okay. Um, after that, we were waiting for the deadline. Um, then we're going to pull up the schedules that they had from last year or what they, they did in the spring for last year. And we're going to try to copy those schedules as much as possible. We're not going to be able to have all, all, all offerings that they already had. Um, and we might have some different options for them. So we'll be putting in some classes into the iPad and then we'll be calling some parents and students and emailing to try to nail that schedule down. Then when school starts on the 20th, um, you, will make sh you will have all those classes already on your iPad and you'll know what to do. Um, for the middle grades and for electives, I think we're gonna start with the core courses and then we're going to ask the students um, exactly which elective they would like to have. And then we'll add that, those electives after they get their iPads. And so it's important to know that if you have signed up and you have registered, that we are planning on your child being in the Galleon mm -hmm. Online Academy. So this is not a situation where we would be reaching out and, and denying you. So if you are a Galleon student and you are registered by noon tomorrow, um, we will be including you in that process. So you know, please be patient with us because again, we'll be meeting probably at 12.05 tomorrow <laughs> to start looking at those numbers and, and making some final decisions about what things look like. Right now we have over 320 of our Tigers that are signed up with the Online Academy. And we have a handful of teachers that we're working with, um, special services. And so if you don't get a call in the next couple of days, you know, don't worry about that. We will be getting information out to you and um, in your hands here in the next week or so. But just know that you are a part of that online family um, if you filled out that registration form. Also, in the next couple of days, we're going to have a form, a contract to go out through final forms. And that should list very briefly um, everything you need to know and you need to make sure that that gets signed along with the final forms. If you're signed up for the online academy or to do remotely all online. Um, also, t when you pick up your iPad, there'll be a one page document that'll help get you started so you can log on right away and make sure all your classes are there and go ahead and start to message us if you need to change your classes or you want to talk to us a little bit. We are also going to have a web on our Galleon City Schools website underneath the, tab the schools tab. There will be a special tab for the online academy and we'll have specific, very, very specific information with screenshots. Click here, enter your login code here. Here's how you check your progress. Here's how you check the assignments that are due. Um, to be very, very specific the details on when, once you get into that. Also, um, we're going to have a Zoom meeting on the evening of the 19th. We'll have one for the lower grades, the middle grades, and the upper grades, and we'll get the link for that as well. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to find out more information. At this point, we're just kind of in a holding, holding period, waiting to see what else is going to change, because we know things change day by day. And I'll add, too, that if you are still trying to um, register online. The link is on the Galleon website. Find the Parents tab and there's a page called Enrollment and there is a link to the registration form on that page. And, and please, I know we have open enrollment there and we have Galleon Online Academy, so you are going to be looking for the Online Academy tab um, to sign up. We've had a couple of people that we've seen it on a couple of different uh, tabs, so uh, Galleon Online Academy is what you're looking for. Okay. Do we have any other questions, Chris? We did, and it sounds like we've been getting some questions about being able to preview the the platform, um, you know, the online academy platform. So it sounds like you're going to do a Zoom meeting on the 19th to kind of give everybody a sneak peek of what that's going to look like. I, I, yes. Because we're that that's a common theme that's coming through right now is people want to, you know, can we see what it looks like? You know, what are some of the yeah. class elective examples that uh, you know students can take? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I will say this, we're getting a lot of questions that have been answered earlier in the video as well. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so if you, you know, once we're done here, you'll have a chance to go back and rewatch it. Um, so I, again, I just wanted to clarify, Mrs. Gimbel, that, you know, you will be showing the, the, the software during that, right. that Zoom. Yeah, we hope to have that website up and running by the 17th. Um, that'll be, you know, very, very explicit. If you want explicit, if you want to get on now, um, you can go to the NOVA website, um, Northwestern Ohio Virtual Academy. 
and it's abc.nova.org and then you can there's a couple tutorial videos on there that you can kind of see um, the, it says Lincoln Learning Academy which we're not using but it starts off the same um, it'll show you how to log in it'll show you how some of the classes are set up and then it also gives some of some of the classes that are available should we decide to um, give more electives or um, even at the high school level accelerated courses um, like environmental science and things like that. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of, of last minute questions that have come in here. Um, some questions about academic transition between online and traditional. So, you know, what does that look like, Mrs. Gimble? Are you asking if we can switch back and forth? Yes. Okay. Um, right now, um, we'd like for you to pick one, hopefully by tomorrow at noon. You know, <laughs> obviously, if, there is, if there's an emergency and you have to go online and you were traditional, I mean, we'll work with you. But you need to start the curriculum at the beginning um, because the curriculums are slightly different. We'll have different activities. Uh, we really want this to be a successful experience for you. So we're going to set up some meetings. We're going to set up some conferences. We're going to use some tips and tricks, um, some motivation. Um, to try to get you know the kids to work if it's not working and we're really going to make sure that w once you pick us once you pick a a platform or once you pick either to go remote or to be online or to be brick and mortar um, you need to make sure that that's your goal don't look back just make the decision because the grass is always greener on the other side so we want to make sure that everyone is ready to you know, go in with a positive attitude and go in with an attitude of let's make this work. And um, just wanted to kind of piggyback on that in, in just saying that we have asked our families to make a commitment to at least a semester. You know, we are moving staff around and, and working with staff to make this work to accommodate our families. So um, it does become challenging if we have people jumping back and forth. And so we are asking you know, for all of you to, to help us out, meet us in the middle, um, create a win-win situation where we can provide this opportunity to you. Um, and I will compare this similarly to, you know, if you, if you were to up and move and go to another district, you know, the, the content standards are going to be covered for your child, but what it looks like in a Galleon classroom as opposed to this particular platform, just as different as if you were you know, at another nearby district, they may be teaching with a different curriculum, but again, same standards. And so we wanna to try to keep the kids, you know, on pace to be successful. If they're flipping and, and moving from, you know, traditional to virtual, you know, that will be different curriculum. They will have to adjust to that. And so there, will may, there may be some learning curves. So again, it's all about your child, setting them up for what's, you know, best for them. Um, obviously, I know that, you know, Mrs. Gimble addressed the fact that, you know, there may be extenuating circumstances, there may be a medical condition, there may be, you know, fill in the blank, there's all sorts of things that could happen nowadays. So um, we will be working through those on an individual basis to meet the needs of our families, whether it be they're coming, they're going, or anything in between at this point. Um, the last question that I have here is kindergarten screening. So we do need to do kindergarten screening so you can schedule times. They are limiting the number of people that are coming in for those. There is information on the Facebook page about the protocols and the procedures and the safety precautions that we are putting in place. Um, so uh, you can call the primary building and they can discuss that further with you and to give you more information and to set up a time if you have a kindergartner. Any other questions that we have? I know we have lots. Um, but anything else that we need to address right now? Um, not, at, uh, not at this point. I think a lot of the, the issues and questions um, appear that they'll be addressed, uh, you know, okay. as we get closer to the 19th. Okay. And families start being contacted. All right. Mrs. Gimble, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we hop off? You know, I just want to emphasize that things keep changing and we all need to stay flexible and we all need to help each other. And we really appreciate all the feedback we've gotten so far and all the questions that helps us to plan and helps us to um, tell you what you need to know. Uh, so please keep that communication open. Um, you can always contact me by email. It's gimbal.angie at gallianschools.org. Um, my email is on the website under staff um, for the high school, I believe at this point. Um, 
I don't really have much else to say. Okay. Mrs. Reinhardt, anything else you want to share before we head out? I'm for the always night? going to do my shameless plug on making sure everybody <laughs> gets final forms updated and completed. It's super important that parents get that done so that our 6 through 12 students can then sign their papers. All right. okay. Well, we just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. We hope that tonight's session was certainly helpful to you. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out. And, um, you know, certainly it, we can try to help you in the morning before that, that noon deadline. Um, and we just hope that you're all having a good night, staying safe, and we will talk to you soon. Have a good evening.